Loading ammunition can be a very satisfying hobby. End loads are usually far more accurate than commercial ammunition. Plus, depending on the calibers that you load for, you can save some money as well. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some reloading dies. Reloading dies are a vital piece of equipment for loading ammunition. So stick around. Hello, I'm Chris Dover. I'd like to welcome all of our friends back to the Clover Tack channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at several different brands of dies. As we go through each brand of die, I will tell you about the basic function of those dies, plus I will tell you the added feature or benefit and why I prefer that particular brand in that specific die. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get over to the bench and get her started. So before we get started with the dies, there's a couple of things that I would like to show you first. And that is, when we get into the dies, you'll notice on them at that point, oops, that they have lock rings. When you screw your die into the press, then this ring here is what locks the die into the press. Now if we go to a different brand, there's a reason that I pulled this particular set out is it notice the lock rings are different, okay? I like the RCBS style lock rings. And you can buy these uh, in a package of I believe it's three or five at a time. And I generally change mine out. Uh, if I find myself with extra dies and running low, I'll usually rob one. There's a couple of reasons I like these. Uh, if you have a multi-turret press, meaning you have a press that holds more than one die, okay? Um, sometimes you're limited for space in between your dies. And these are really thin, uh, have a really thin wall, okay? So it makes it easier to get your wrench on there. They don't bind up against each other. They also have a set screw, which is nice. So I exclusively use these RCBS lock rings on all of my dies regardless of the brand. That leads me into something else real quick in that all modern dies and all modern presses okay, are going to be threaded 7 8 That means that any die uh, from any particular brand should work in any particular press. The second thing <clears throat> goes along with these lock rings. This is an RCBS Lockering wrench. Notice this fits. And what's cool about this, as opposed to using like a, a big combination wrench or some of the other tools that's out there, is the wall is really thin, first of all. So you've got that clearance if you're talking about a tight space. You've got this, um, this rod here, it's a hollowed out part. So it goes down over your die really well. Okay, then you can flip it, you know, and turn it one way or the other if you need to. Uh, it just works out really well if you're using the RCBS lock rings. So first, let's take a look at the Hornady dies. They are, uh, across the board, my favorite brand, favorite set of dies. And these are a uh, custom grade Hornady set in 9mm, what these are. We'll open it up and we'll notice there's three dies. Now, something to keep in mind here is this is a pistol set, so you have three dies. On a rifle set, okay, uh, typically on a rifle set, you will only have two dies. We have in this pistol set a sizing die, flaring die, and a seating die. Now with rifle caliber die sets, you will not have this uh, case mouth expander or flaring die. A sizing die does just that. When you fire a cartridge in a firearm, it sort of uh, swells or expands that brass cartridge. And that thing is not gonna chamber in anything other than what it was fired in anymore. Or odds are it's not going to. So what the sizing die does is sizes that brass back to specification where then you can load it. A sizing die also performs the function of removing 
the old primer. If we're talking a, uh, a pistol set, the case mouth uh, expander or flare, what it does is it's got a little tapered uh, piece in here and it puts a bail basically on that case mouth it kind of kind of opens it up that way when you're seating that bullet the new bullet or projectile into the case you don't mess up the case uh, it goes in really smooth and a bullet seating die does exactly that this is what you would use to seat the new bullet or projectile into the case and it also performs the function of putting a crimp in that case to hold the bullet or projectile in place. Now one thing that I like about the Hornady dies is in this bullet seating die and it's this little collar right here. And what that does is that keeps as you're seating that bullet or that projectile that keeps everything nice and smooth and straight uh, and you're less out to hang on a case mouth and mess up that round when you're loading it. Now let's take a look at these RCBS AR series small base dies. And this particular set is four 308s. Really nothing special, similar to the Hornady there in uh, composition and design. We've got our sizing die here, which obviously that also removes the um, old primer. And then we've got our projectile, our seating die, bullet seating die, uh, which also crimps. Now, these AR series sets are special because this is not a standard sizing die. This is what they call a small base sizing die. A standard sizing die or a full length sizing die. Um, what that does is that uh, is supposed to do the entire length of, of the cartridge case, of the brass case. What this does is this one sizes down a little bit further a little closer to the head of that cartridge and the reason is with some ARs and other firearms um, I actually had an issue that's what got me into these in the first place I had an issue with the Hornady 308 dies I had and I had a bolt rifle that I could shoot the brass in one of my ARs and then it would not uh, if I sized it with these dies, I could not shoot it in my bolt rifle. And so what I did is I picked these up, started small base sizing, and I've had some friends that's had the same issue, okay? So if you own AR-15s, uh, the AR uh, dies are really the way to go. So last, what we'll take a look at are some Lee Pace Setter dies. And these are uh, 3220 WCF caliber and I know some of you are probably thinking 3220 WCF what in the world is that well that is a cartridge that was somewhat popular in the very late 18 early 1900s particularly in uh, particularly in revolvers which I have several of and the ammunition is somewhat hard to find so I picked up these dies and I'll also cast my own projectiles and I can make ammo for that and I don't have to worry about hunting uh, the older ammo. That's one thing that is actually good about the Lee Pace Setter stuff. Uh, Lee gets a bad rap about being cheap equipment but they offer equipment in some chamberings that either the RCBS or the Hornady you would have to have them custom made or their special order and they would cost you three four times the price so let's take a look at them real quick and the first thing we notice is it's got this little uh, this little pamphlet instruction pamphlet and I will say that the Lee instructions and documentation that come with their dies is actually a pretty good read so 
Um, that is why I have kept that. You'll see with this set that you have three dies there. The 3220 WCF was both a cartridge that was both uh, offered in some rifles and pistols of the time, revolvers I should say, of the time. And here we've got our sizing die, seating die, and our expander die or flaring die. Now just a quick look, we'll, you can kind of see the difference between these dies and the others. They're a little bit cheesier uh, looking. Look, they look a little bit cheaper made. Okay, But I've actually loaded some very good ammo on Lee dies in the past. Uh, I have several, several sets of them in various calibers. And there are people that strictly load on Lee dies and have for many, many, many years. Well, that pretty much covers today's topic. If you have questions or comments, feel free to drop them below. Let's talk about it. If you like the content here on Clover Tech, we invite you to click, like, share, subscribe, and follow. Until next time, stay safe, guys.